My name is Yada Mananda. Formerly, I live in Shangti for Red Monastery from 2008 to 2000, uh, I think to 2011. And after that, I moved to Melbourne. I live in Shangamita Rama and work for the uh, Victoria Buddhist Association for about two years. Then after that, I moved to Honolulu. And subsequently, I lived about seven years in the United States. And now I am in Vietnam for just two months recently. So you're a wandering nun. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that is briefly about me. Yeah. Thank before, you. Be, before moved to Australia, I was in Sri Lanka. And before I was in Sri Lanka, I was in uh, Burma. And before that, I was in Vietnam. I lived in Vietnam around 25 years ago. Mm. Traveled to different country. In each country, I lived over four, five, or seven years. So, so one. And now, I'm feeling that I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> when Julian asked me what you talk about, I said, so I said, I talk on the phone, no, but turn. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so loud to my heart. <laughs> that is the reality of the people who are getting out, you know. <laughs> uh, thank you, Aya, for the uh, quick debrief. Um, yeah. So I'll just do a really quick introduction to today and how we're going to run. Is that okay? And I'll pass to you to give the talk. Yeah, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Hi everyone. Um, as Aya mentioned, uh, as Tina mentioned before, this is a Meta Center talk. Welcome again. Uh, we have these talks every Wednesday, and today we're very honored to have um, Aya Damananda here joining us to talk about the unpleasant realities of life and four noble truths. <laughs> and as Aya mentioned in her brief um, introduction, she was in Australia for a bit but now she's in Vietnam so she's actually dallying from Vietnam which is like amazing um because technology these days we can actually talk to her even though she's not here um so this will be an interactive session so Aya um if you don't mind we'll start with a short meditation introduction to what you would like to talk about and then we'll have a questions answers where I'll jump in and facilitate um, I can help to read out the questions in the Zoom and I can help to, um, and Tina and Zen will help to put the questions into um, the chat as well. So yeah, we'll have a question and answer facilitated session as well after, you um, after your talk. Um, so everyone, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to pop them in the chat. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable sharing your questions with everyone, um, you could also send us questions anonymously to me. Um, this session will be recorded on YouTube, um, I mean, recorded and uploaded to YouTube. So without further ado, um, Aya, I'll hand back to you. <laughs> yeah, so we will have a meditation chat from first, or I will talk first. So, um, yeah. Usually we do a short meditation before the talk, if that's okay with you. Or but yeah. if you like a different so, order, that's fine too. We will meditation about 30 minutes, is it? Yes. Uh, could be 30, sometimes we do like shorter ones, like 10 to 15, just to get everyone started and settled in. Doesn't have to be a very long one. Mm -mm, not very long one. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, yeah. Okay, so uh, we will sit and meditate about 20 minutes or uh, 25 okay. minutes, all right? <laughs> okay, uh, up to you, Let's start with meditation. Uh, I will, yeah, I... Budget contact, I will know what I talk, and I never prefer the talk before. So, on the interaction within our mind, so I will know how to communicate. So, is that okay for you? You talk with the format. Of course, I uh, that's beautiful. Love like that. Uh, yeah, whatever that you prefer. <laughs> So we will have about 20, 22, 25 minutes meditation. So everybody, are you comfortable on the cushion now? So if you are comfortable on your cushion, so we should start with meditation, prior meditation. Yes. So I will ring your bell and you will listen to it. 
Do you hear the bell sound? Yeah. If the hear sound, yes, we can. Yes, we can hear the bell. Aya. Yeah. yeah. So with which part we get traction on meditation? Um, everybody sitting comfortably on the cushion or on the chair or whatever position you prefer to be. But the most important thing you have to feel it at ease. The second standard for the meditation that your position should be firm, firm at ease and retractable, retractable for your body and retractable for everybody around you. And close the eyes. Connecting to the body through the breath. Breathing in. We are now, we are breathing in. Breathing out, we know we are breathing out. Just breathing naturally with no causing it to be long or short. And aware of the breath. Just be aware of this. The air coming and the air go out. And how do you feel about that? Breathe at a connection to the body and feeling. Feel that you have a body and that body is breathing a living thing. Operating through the bridge. Just be aware of the breathing in or out. If the mind is running here and there, wandering, but gently take it back on the breath and do nothing else. Just be aware of the air coming and getting out with the body. Feel it.
Sure. Welcome everyone back. Alfanjai. And make the body feel easy. Thank you, Sophia and Tina and everybody. Yeah. We may all already encounter something unpleasant in life. So I just wonder any one of you have not suffered in your life so far? <laughs> You please <laughs> not yet. Oh, <laughs> so that is something that we call reality that everybody we miss one few or many times in life. Thing that we are not expected, but it could happen. And thing that we don't want it to happen, but it happened anyway. And sometimes when I remember when I was young and people, when I learned about the vulnerable truth and people tell me that Buddhism is something that is um, uh, pessimistic, You're talking about your ill of life and talking about your thing that is very negative to life. But to me, it's very real. It is reality, not because I was born in war. I was born in war time. And because of the war time and more nutrition shifted all in the country and the body, uh, my body is not very good. And I don't know any one of you have the notion that your body is not good enough. Hmm? Have you ever seen about that your body or you feel discomfort, you feel unease with your body? that we call the physical suffering or the physical discomfort. But actually the reality of the brutal truth of life is not only in physical discomfort or the feeling of unease, but there are much more than that, that we feel easy face. We feel uncertain and we feel not in control. Right? Not in control. I remember last year I was in the United States and the war between the Russian and Ukraine broken. And the people around me calling and talking about that. And we can feel that the energy of unease is rotting in the air. And everybody, everybody was worrying that the work war to may happen and time. The tension it become very high. And after that, the air is almost heating up. And it's, it's resulting in the many gun violence in the United States. And most of them are for no reason. Actually, no actually reason why people become heating, why people worrying, is it right thing? And it's true thing. We can't imagine that a child might or a reasonable can do things like that. And if you ever live in the United States, you will feel that air uneasy whenever there are elections. For the president coming up, 
you can feel all that and you have to, all the society were divided into two camps, one for Trump, another for the Biden. And the fighting and even brother and sister, when they come to your political point of view, they don't want to talk with each other. That is a social unrest. Not only the personal, but social and interpersonal unrest and interpersonal conflict. And we experience it all in our life, in everyday life, on new and whenever we connect to the body. Do you feel that? People get things easier, get angry. People easily get things obsessed. And people easily get depressed, easy taste. That on the side of Dukkha. Actually, you work Dukkha in Pali. Your birth church it covers a lot of things in life. It covers one greater of reality that everybody one few or many times in our life get in talk with I get checked from Dukkha I the physical suffering and the sense of unease chest conflict all mental Suffering. So in short, we cannot avoid it. Even when I were in Australia, there are not much big thing happen, but a lot of bird fire. You feel it, right? The people in Australia feel the bird fire, and you deal with El Nino, with the climate change. The bird climb will be more likely to happen. Not only in Australia, in America, and anywhere. I was in Dallas, in one city, in Highland City of Vietnam that month, and for no reason, bird climb and burning a lot of forest. Yeah. And that is just the starting. It may happen anywhere, anytime, and causing everything. It looks like it heat up in the air. Not only physically, mentally, emotionally. And it manifests in the way we connect with our body, in the way we connect with our mind, and in the way we connect with the people, and in the way we connect with the work. The sense of unease, tension, is it easy to And uncertainty, we are on fire, even we don't want it. So that's the, the Buddha called it Dukkha. It's not only your birth, always sickness, associating with the unwanted people or things in our life, and dissociating with the people that we love, with their most dear to our heart. And what we want, we cannot get it. And what we don't want, we get it. <laughs> and more, we are cleaning to the five aggregates. The body, the feeling, the perception, the mental formation, and the consciousness affecting to it. Be in this. Close to it. We have something that we feel is it's real. Something is not empty. Something is give a feeling. Yet I am. This is who I am. Yet what I mean to be.
Yes, Kai. It has a lot of uneasy, a lot of irritation, a lot of resentment and disappointment in our life. So that is one reality we all face. One at the Buddha time, there was a young man, his name is Yasha. Yasha, young man Yasha was the son of a rich kid of India in the ancient time. He had four wives and many, many other women in his home heart. And he was brought up very comfortably. He had a big farm. They have dancers, they have musicians, they have a lot of, they have a lot of food but when he fall into the at least at the mid of the party and after a few hours he wake up and he feel disgusting about what had happened that night and the young man yasha he run out of the house and he said the Buddha were waiting for him under the root of a tree in a forest nearby. When he ran into the park and he ran into the forest in order to run away the mind with demise and confuses and disgusting about what should happen during the night party and what he had saw when he wake up and everybody was sleeping in the wing and the liver and the wing in the shashra in the heart and arguing in the music, and arguing in the delusion, thinking that everything is permanent, everything will not change. But the young man have an urgent feeling that he has to run away, that is God thing, that uncertain, that's not what he really wants. And he meets the word now, peacefully sit under the root of a tree, at the outskirt of a forest. And he, he feels very, Strange feeling, feel the connection with the hermit who was sitting under the root of a tree, peacefully, fresh, very fresh look, very fresh energy all around at him. The young, handsome, and rich man just run out of a knife party, but feeling one hour. Oh. Feeling and each and however and confuses. So we come to the Buddha and by the compassion of the enlightened one, if you're at peace and just after a short conversation, he wants to be a monk. And because he had a lot of marriage far in the part line, that is why immediately with your work, A, he pickle, he become a monk in possession of the Buddha. So, not only the poor people experience Dukkha, or the sense of uneasy, the sense of dismerge and discomfort, rich, young people also feel the same thing. And even you live in a society, you think that materially that we already developed and everything seemed compact and at ease. But not always you feel at ease. A lot of irritation, a lot of wondering, and a lot of tension and stress in order to maintain that life standard in a developed country. So that to be called the truth of structure. It's not except anybody. And return to the story of Joshua, how he meets the Buddha. And what you see in the regular Gautama or in the Hermes with the radiant look, with a bright energy, with the sense of calm and at ease, with a fresh look. But he puts at nothing. At the time, he even not, he even haven't had a monastery that he's just a wandering monk here and there, everywhere, but nowhere. So what Joshua about 
the Buddha, I attached newly enlightened. I think the Buddha that I about 36 or 37 years, not old yet, about 36 years. Any one of you by that age, huh? they were with a fringe aloe. They were just around 36 or 37 years. And Yasha, young Yasha, by that time, he just around with 20 or just past 20, not few years, just few years up in his 20. And what did they convert with each other? Huh? What did they really communicate? And what did they really feel about each other? What attracting the young Rikit Yasha, who is a refuge, Gautama, or the newly enlightened Buddha, make Yasha feel at ease around him? And what really in the Buddha that make Yasha draw to him and want to be a monk, to be a homeless man? From a ricket to be a homeless man, that is very, very long, young, right? Why? Why did young and rich Yasha want to run away from the material compass? And everybody, everybody thinks that it merit to be born into a rich family with a young, with a friendly body and all the connection, all the relationship that he had. And why, what motivates him to, to do up everything, to give up everything and become a wandering monk? Honlos, tap the Buddha, tap the peace, the ease, energy around the newly enlightened Buddha that attracting and comforts the detracting mind. It confuses the chain about life and death. Yeah, we call Nibbana of peace. They are suffering and they are the end of suffering. In that trend of end of suffering, it manifests in the Buddha personality, in the way he looks, in the way he sits, in the way he walks, in the way he speaks, all emitting a kind of energy that the peace, deep peace, deep trend at ease, person who puts at nothing. Uh, do you think that in our time we can be like that? Hmm? Any of you think that in our time we can be like the Revolut Gautama or the newly enlightened Buddha? We can give up everything and be at ease under the root of a tree without the harassment of police <laughs> or anyone else? We are more of us not feel ready to give up that, but Yasha feel that deep peace. And he dare to throw up everything. He dare to give up everything to have that peace, have that channel at ease, and to have that freedom of heart. Freedom of heart. That's and the liberation. It's the mind from all the hate, delusion, disease, envy, jealousy, selfishness, confusion, hesitation, stress, the freedom of the mind from the top, the thing that most harassing us. So what is the cause of suffering? And cause 
a peach. Aya? Yeah? I'm so sorry to disrupt. Are you writing something in the chat for people mm -hmm. to see? Are you currently typing in the chat for people to see? Yeah, I try. I'm typing and not everybody see it. No, we can't see it. We had someone asking about it. So I'm just saying, yeah, <laughs> I I'm gonna do it for everyone. So okay. I'm sorry I didn't know think about it. Yeah. Okay. The Doka and the young man called Yasha and the called the Prapring and the called the P are here. So I will make it reachable to everybody. Thank you, Aya. Can you ask? Oh, there we go. Yeah, now we can see it. <laughs> okay, now you can see it. Thank you for reminding me, Shavya. Yeah. I Thank think you. I Thank you, that. Annie, as well. <laughs> yeah. So I'm talking about the cost of property and the cost, the cost of peace. It all from Amai. Do you think that your work will be people for a long time? The work we all your material outside here yeah, can give us most of the comfort in our life. It does give quite a lot. But the problem is we want more. Our one thing is a suffering. What happened that we don't want? We react to it. That is why we feel tension and anger, resentment. And what happened, yeah, if according to our needs, it responds to our needs, or it goes with our wanting, we feel good. So if not really what happened out oh, yeah. But the way we connect to it, it make how we feel. It's not what whatever happened, yeah, but yeah, how we connect to it. So now I make an a more example. I remember that a few years ago when the election in United States so the United people, United people were divided in two camps. One camp supporting Trump and another camp supporting Biden. And were elected become the president of the United States. The other camp, the camp that supporting Trump, become very depressed, very angry, very easy test. And many of them are Vietnamese. So they call me and they tell me about your suffering. So another camp who support Biden, they were overturned. They feel overwhelming with, the, with happiness and comfort and positive feeling. So I see that, hmm, is that the election make them happy or, did, or unhappy or what they already have in their mind make them happy or unhappy? What do you think? Huh? What they already have in their mind or the result of the election? What? Huh? Andy? Andy? It what already in your mind or what happened, yeah? I feel like election is make me like annoying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. so annoying and more like stressful because we don't know what to do. Every, you know, every elections here, it just make everybody just worried, concerned what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um so but after that, after the election is over and people will say like one, only one become president of the United States, not two, right? Mm -hmm. So the, one, the, the result of the election will make, make people depressed or worry more or disappointed. So that depression or disappointment or that happiness or joy, where they come from, from the result of the election or from what they already have in their mind before the result come out? That is my question. I think that is from inside, not from the elections. Yeah, that from what inside your mind, is that, isn't it? Already, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that we call the cause. And the election or result of election is we call condition. 
So now we have to know what is really your real heart and what is your condition to make we feel in either way, in this way or other way. What is your heart and what is your condition? The heart is what already in our mind, in our heart. What we expectation, uh, expectation. Is a cause. And the condition, condition is what happened out young. Yeah. Now it comes to one, one just the second truth. As that is a tramu, tramu, daya, shakya. Tramu, daya, shakya is a, the cause, the cause of phenomena. What tramu, daya, udaya, what, uh, what come up? Shamuraja, it come up in our mind. Or it come up together, sham, it together. What condition, what heart come together to make it happen that way? And the way we relate, we relate our relationship to that event with what attitude. So it make it, what feeling we come up. Shamuraja Shakya is a cost usually translate as the cause of suffering. But actually, it, it's not just a symbol. Oh, Raja, what come up? Shram together. What arise together? So I already talked about the cause and the condition. So can we control the condition? Can we? Can. we can't, right? You know that. Uh, even without bad intention and without bad effort, we cannot control the condition. So what we can do with cause or with condition? Huh? One thing we can do something about that is what in our mind, our attitudes. What in our mind? Yeah, we can reshape. We can thought what in our mind. And what we keep in our mind is your cause. And that thing, that content, we can get control of, but not the condition of yeah. So now you see some light on it, right? So how do we feel about what happened out oh, yeah? What happened out oh, yeah, to your condition? Make it that way. And what, how do we feel about that? Or how, in what way we relate to that event that is the most important to part of a certain feeling? That pleasant feeling or unpleasant feeling, it must depend on the way we relate to the event, not on the event itself. Before I'm living for Hanoi, now I'm in Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam. I was visiting my family, and I, for many years I I I came to live with my family member, with my elder brother, and I learned that he and me no more have the same voice regarding your political thing, political phenomena. And when with with my sister-in-law and he, we got talk, we got sit on the tea table and we're talking and. Coming to the conflict in Russia with between Russia and Ukraine and the war, so we get into the best. My brother was very did comfort with my opinion about the war happened yeah. <laughs> and he almost out of control. And my sister in law calm him down, and I know that I make things change. Normally, we may have the same boy, but now we have different boy on what happened yeah. And we, we all are all done. So we quickly come into peace with each other and drop out the political 
view file. But what happened? We do not record something like that. We not regard for each other feeling. And we should keep good relationship over all. Love, trade, triumph, not opinion. What in your heart is more important than what in your head? So we should still get connected. Hmm? And we resolve our problem within few minutes. That because our love for each other, my respect for him and his care for me is more important than how we look at the world. But most people don't see this. They see that what in their mind is more important than what in their heart, right? My rational and heart, emotional. And how we balance between this? Between opinion and feeling? And how we make sense in our relationship with the people around us and with the people in the world? And even making relationship with ourselves. That is the most important. So listen to the words, not to your head, with your opinion here and there, with your phenomena, work, with your political, social, climate, everything, yeah. So how to come to peace? That's the wisdom. And we can come up with it, or we can fine with the whole world and causing more suffering. But do you think fine with your world or return to the trust, to the original feeling that makes you feel at ease or make you feel uneasy, make you feel comfort or make you feel discomfort, make you feel fearful or make you feel stressful. Make you calm or make you more feel easy test with what happened out there. What do you think? But more important, connecting with your original feeling or connecting with your opinion and run according to opinion to make take you far away from peace. But connecting to your real feeling and working with it and she is a heart the cause of suffering and the cause of happiness. And you will learn how to deal with them. That's more important than what just happened out there. So that is a summary of the four noble truth, noble truth and the young Yasha, the ricket of India and the six, 500 years ago, 2,500 years ago, you know how to connect. Connect with the Buddha, with the energy that the Buddha emitted under the root of the tree. Connecting to the nature, to the original, not just the phenomenon. And now you know what is the cause, what is the condition, and how we relate to it. Where to return to. And that make an end of suffering. Not the end of suffering, changing your condition in the world, but changing your way with the event. Oh, yeah. That's more important. So, I will stop the talk here. And now we come to the section for the question and answer. I don't think my English is good enough for all of you. So I'm sorry I, if some of you cannot understand what I just said. If you have any question in your mind, please feel free to express it. Thank you, Aya. Thank you so much. Um, that was a beautiful talk. Um,
especially the bit about coming back to our hearts. I think we grow up with the default um, assumption that we need to trust our logic, we need to trust our intellect, but we shouldn't trust our feelings. So it is about connecting to our feelings and our heart that is most needed in this world. And that is the cause, and not being able to do that is the cause of our suffering. So um, at this question answers, please, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat if you're online or if you're in person, let Tina or Zen know um, either through a piece of paper that they will give out um, and they will pop those questions in the chat as well. Um, yeah, just any questions you have about what Aya um, talked about today. Aya, I haven't seen any questions coming through yet, but I had a question to start us off. Um, so expectation in your story is what created the suffering for your brother, for the relationship between your brother and yourself. So in a relationship setting, how do you manage a relationship where there's no expectations, but you're also giving the other person what they need or you're, um, I guess like, um, you're you're communicating things in the right way. Please let me know if this question's clear. Yeah. Does that make sense? My question. I, I don't yeah. even know if I know if I. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what we relate to what in and out in our child and oh yeah. So the expectation and what we we possess. We deposited before. It is conditioned. Yeah, our expectation on the conditioned phenomena as well. So, what we already deposited, what we already keep in yeah, and yeah, it conditioned by our fat experience. The fat experience on the condition of the way we expect things we happen yet why or that way. And the another thing that is, yet is your God, but you mean we can equate it and how can we do and how can we relate with it? We can communicate uh, widely. It called your right speak on the noble apron part, right? How we can talk it out, how we can express it? That is our right effort. And how we she is. Contributing in right view and right mindfulness, and how we deal with it. Executing in our mind, that is your right, what? That is your right attitude. Chamavayama, right attitude or right talk. And how we calm it down, it come down to the end of the noble icon part, right concentration or shama, shamati. Uh, how we balance, so much of the accident is not concentration at all. It's how we balance within the different factors in our mind to make it achieve. Uh, <laughs> to come in time with it. So we all already have, yeah, the Buddha already talked about that, that uh, the middle way are uh, the noble icon path. We already have all the means in the shakti. But how we understand, we learn about that. We understand and how we apply in our daily life that is the most important. That it needs practice, right? <laughs> it needs to practice to be skillful. Without practice, we can't be skillful. Even we have good intention, but good intention not good enough. Not enough. We need more than good intention, isn't it? <laughs> that's right I, uh, I agree um so a follow-up from what you just said we need good intention but that's not good enough how can we translate our good intention into continuous effort or right action things like that oftentimes people or we do have the right intention um, for example, you do have disagreement with someone and you do have the intention to want to listen but the effort and um, the right view, the fact is just haven't arisen yet. Right, I 
moving forward and how we make people feel that we have good intention and we have right efforts and we are well concentrated, well balanced. Sometimes it needs more than that, more than that. So that is your way of we communicate with your work. Shoot it out. <laughs> but shoot it out in a wholesome way that right to pick. Right? Sometimes you write talk or some an way of communication that mentally communicates, right? We can mentally communicate, we can verbally communicate, and sometimes we communicate with action, that right action and right livelihood. A lot of things, yeah, right? The action and right livelihood, that they don't show a way of expression of our good intention to other people. And, but not all high people could achieve our good intention. Isn't that? Right? That's your question, right? Many times people meet understanders. And not because of, we are not pupil enough, but because of their perception and distorted or conditioned it in other way, right? That is why even with good intention and with all the good thing in the world, life is still a lot of suffering. Even the Buddha, many people meet understand him, right? Not everybody understand him and pray him. So how about us? We don't have a lot of parami or merit like the Buddha. So just be humble. <laughs> right? Just be humble and try one more with curiosity, not with depression and resentment. Right? There are more things to learn in life. I go through 55 years in my life now, and other try of life. So I am, I travel in many different countries with, with different people, with poor, rich, middle class, with people very learned and with people illiterate at work. With, so what do I feel? Not always people, people different level of understanding, different level of perception. So we have to learn the way how you receive information, not only the way how we express information, not how, not the way we relate the information, but learn the way how they interpret it, how they perceive it. So we learn to be empathy. Is that clear or not? You know, empathy with us empathy with other people because they are also conditioned in, in certain way. They, their condition are not like our condition. My condition is different from other people's condition. So we have to learn how they were conditioned to, to be that way. That what you to tell my students, understand yourself, be with them, but understand other people are compassion. And we need both with them and compassion. <laughs> Thank you, Aya. Um, as you were talking about, um, oh, actually, we had someone asking, you know, as we're talking about these examples in real life, um, someone asked, how can we apply the Four Noble Truths in our lives? It is easier said than done. Even if I recognize the suffering, how can I manage it? Yeah. See the truth and live with the truth is more important. Live with the truth. We see the suffering as universal phenomena is everywhere. And not only in us, we look into the big picture, not in the small picture that our personal experience, but look at the how the work is manifest, how the work is operate, how the work is running on. So we look into the big picture. So we, we see that it not only me suffer. But other people, everybody can suffer in one way or another. So it looks like when we see other people suffering, we don't feel very lonely. We are on the, on the same boat, right? Our boat on the same boat. That is in your condition, it works. In a big boat, that boat is your whole blindness, the whole human realm. Not only us, when we big, look into the big picture, we will see it in a different way. That is how we relate to it. 
feel how we relate to it. It makes a lot of difference. So that is how we apply the vulnerable to in life. How we relate to it. That's the right view and right attitude. The path to end suffering. And the effort follow after that, right speak, right action, right livelihoods, right effort, right mindfulness, right, con right concentration on how to balance these the different factors in and out, physical and mental. How to see with the different, with a message of relationship, message of phenomena that happen together. It happened together, that is why it's called Samudaya Sakya in Pali. It happened together and it relates to each other, our attitude to make other people react in certain way. And other people's attitude make us react in certain way. And meditation is a way, mindfulness meditation is a way that enable us to see that, to see that mention, that condition, the phenomena, not only accept it, but see it as it actually is and don't get entangled in this. The most important is not get entangled in it. We see it with the objective eye, objective mind, not with the subjective feeling and overwhelmed by our feeling. So church step by one step and look at it with a clear mind and open heart and we will know how to do it effectively. Huh? Is that clear enough? It's easier said than done. It takes me almost 20 years to be master of Indian way. Hmm? So you are all young, you have time to learn and see every lesson in life, something exciting, something inspiring, something new to learn. So you will not feel the blessed, even a lot of challenging, but challenge yourself with that challenge. To kill the reality with open heart. We will go through life with a smile, not with tea or crying. <laughs> Let the action put more that fun. So another question come up, right? Yeah, wow. Um, uh, we had a comment in relation to what you said, um, Aya. Uh, someone yeah. said, sometimes when I'm suffering, I find it useful to ask myself, what am I holding on to as a reflective question? Yeah, when you feel suffer, what, what are you really holding to that make you suffer? What you holding to that is your expectation in your heart? And you expect that the work will happen in a certain way. But when it not happen in the way you want it to be, you suffer. So see what is yeah, what you hold into that make you feel that way. Not blaming what happened over yeah. Can you do that? That is a practice. That's the right question. <laughs> After a lot of passion. Not only to your picture, but to yourself. Yeah, and connects to what you were saying before, curiosity and being inspired. And as you were talking, compassion for ourselves and listening to ourselves first and foremost. Well, this is a very beautiful conversation, very beautiful talk. Um, we don't have any questions left. So, um, and we're perfectly on time. So, um. Thank you very much, Aya, for this amazingly heart-connected um, conversation and talk for us. Um, using Coming back to the very basics of the Four Noble Truths, but giving us new perspectives and let, um, allowing us to really connect to the feeling of how it feels to really see the truth and be at ease with it and... Um, come back to the feelings with a clear mind um yeah so I usually um we do finish with a bit of prayer or dedication of merits uh would you feel comfortable yeah. doing either of them yeah yeah please offer to form our hand and do the dedication 
Imaza da manurama pati pati za bhutan kemi. What is the practice of the Dharma we dedicate to the Buddha? Imaza da manurama pati pati za daman kemi. What is the practice jointly according to the Dharma we approach as the teaching of the Buddha? Imaza da manurama pati pati za sangan kemi. Why is it practicing daily according to the teaching of the Buddha? We find a path to the community who follow the standard of the Buddha teaching. Ata imaza pati pati za jati chara pati maranga pari muki chami. Idang me punyang and shabakaza bangundu shapaduka pamukyantu. Imang punya pagang shapasata nang bajema. By practice, dryly accordingly to the Buddha teaching, may we make an end of suffering concerning to the birth of a sickness and death and all that. Brutal reality in our life, like sorrow, lamentation, may we all have the strength to make an end of dukkha and make an end of ashava, distinguish it, ashava, all the thought of suffering, and with the pure heart, we share the marriage of learning and practicing according to the teaching of the enlightened one. May all be at peace. May all be healthy, happy, and free from suffering. Thank you so much, Aya. Um, thank yeah. you, everyone, so much for joining. Any question remaining, please send it to me, and I will answer by text. Um, I think I will see you again on November. I have another talk with Jogarup on November. Is that right? Shabu? Yes, that's that's correct, Venerable. Yes. Yeah. So we will continue on the same topic. Yeah. Yay! That would be awesome. Looking forward to seeing you again, Aya. And okay, thank bye. you. And thank you, Sasha. Bye, Aya. Uh, and everyone, we just have some more announcements before we leave. So we've got um, next week, we have Venerable Metaji joining us. And it will be both online and he will be joining us in person as well. He's usually not in Sydney, so it'll be a great opportunity to come and meet Venerable. And then next Tuesday, we have yoga session again at 6.15 p.m. to 7.15. And we also have Meta Convention coming up. So we already held one Meta Convention before. We have another one coming up. We've got a lot of speakers coming and talking to us about Meta. Sing Sing, did you want to chat a bit more about the Meta Convention? Oh, yeah, the information is there. But basically, we have speakers from all over the world throughout the week from different traditions. And so, yes, please, please join us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be on the, from the 21st of, uh, sorry, 25th of uh, September until the 1st of October. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Aya. Bye, everyone.